Hi, so while working on the Hero Junior rebuild, one of the things I decided to rebuild was the battery pack. The battery typically goes down here in the bottom, and in the original robot it would have been a pair of 6 volt lead acid batteries. Um, from what I remember, those batteries had sort of poor longevity. They would get kind of uh, worn out over time, and the robot wouldn't run very long. They also didn't have the greatest capacity. Uh, I remember back in the day, I think I installed a big battery and stuck it like in the middle or something. Um, but I decided to try to rebuild um, this battery using modern components. So I'm going to go with a lithium uh, battery pack and I'm going to assemble it from 18650 cells. Um, and in the process I'm going to review something called the Bruise End Battery Kit, which is the kit that I use to help me assemble the battery. Uh, now I'm not going to go through each and every uh, minute step in assembling this battery, but I am going to uh, show various stages along the way, like you know when I had assembled the cells together or when I had uh, finished the wiring and wrapped it up in tape, uh, that sort of thing, just to give people an idea of what uh, the battery assembly process is like. This is my first time assembling a lithium battery. Lithium batteries are dangerous. Um, they can cause fires, can cause explosions. You kind of need to know what you're doing and be able to use quality components and quality cells. Here I have some goodies that just arrived from Bruise End. This is a do-it-yourself lithium ion battery kit. I ordered this because I want to make a battery to go in the Hero Junior project that I'm working on. So let's go through the stuff in the box. The kit is here. I'll open that last. Let's go through the rest of it first. This is a 5.5 millimeter nut driver that is used to drive the appropriate size nuts in the kit. I didn't have a 5.5 millimeter of my own. It's actually kind of a nice looking nut driver. It's you know aluminum body and a little set screw to hold the driver in. It's better than I had expected. We have a couple battery management boards to go along with our do-it-yourself lithium battery. These are 4S battery management boards, so four batteries in series, and that should give me 14.4 to 16.8 volts. Here are a couple XT60 connectors with leads pre-wired to them, um, and here's a couple more. In retrospect, I'm not sure why I ordered con connectors with the leads already on them because, you know, I can solder. I could have done that myself. It just seemed handy since they were selling them on the website to grab a few pairs of them. This should be my battery charger. It is a 16.8 volt 3 amp battery charger made by uh, the model is a Bull Bull Gadol. Bull Bull Gadol. It'd be interesting to uh, put the voltmeter in and see what uh, voltage actually comes out of this. Is it really tightly regulated to 16.8 or is it just approximate? Who knows? We'll find out. And then here we have the do it yourself battery kit. Let's open this up and take a quick look. Uh, actually, two bags of parts. Enough to build lots and lots of cells in our battery. Um, what these are is these are little, take one of them out of there, little spring-loaded clips so your battery, your 18650 would go inside of there and push up against this metal contact inside. It's pretty heavy force on that contact. Then out the top side is a threaded post where you would come along with a bus bar. Now let me pull a couple of these off. And then you could parallel your batteries like that and then you could go uh, put them in series going the other way, screw it down with nuts. Um, that seems good. I mean, this seems seems like a good quality. Those contacts are good and stiff. Um, we'll put it together. We'll see how it works out. It, I bought it because it seemed like a well thought out system. Uh, these lithium ion batteries can be a little bit dangerous. Uh, I don't have the equipment to uh, spot weld them. 
So I went to, with this kind of bolt together kit and I can put together the batteries in whatever um, number of series in parallel I want for my application, build a lithium ion uh, battery pack of my own choosing. So here is my first step in assembling the battery pack. This is a 4S3P battery pack. So it has four cells in series by three cells in parallel. Now the parallel banks actually can slide right off. You can take one off like that and then you can slide it right back on. It takes a little bit to line everything up yeah, once you got it lined up, um, so you can you can take it you could take this whole thing apart if you wanted to. Um, the next step I will do will be to put on some of the uh, clamps that hold it together. So it came with some little um, threaded nut bars that you stick through there and you tighten down. Um, and then once I've done that, the next job will be to run the parallel bars and then the series bars. So series bars across there. Then you flip it over and you'll do series bars across this, and then we will have a wired battery pack. But anyway, that is the Vruzen system. I think it worked out pretty well for me. Um, it does take a fair amount of force to press these batteries into these caps. Um, so I did uh, set down a board and really bared down hard on it with my hand. Uh, but it's not so much force that you can't pull them back apart and redo them if you need to. Uh, it does make sense to mark all these batteries as you're doing them and absolutely double check every one of them to make sure that you've got it in the right direction. Okay, here is my completed battery pack. I've already wrapped it up in Kapton tape, so it may be a little bit hard for you to see, but you ought to be able to get a little bit of an idea of what's through there. So, for my two primary connections, I just soldered directly to one of the bus bars. I just took... Uh, bus bar, put it uh, in my helping hands, just soldered a wire onto the top of it. Uh, that seemed as good a connection as using the crimp connectors that came with the kit and it allowed me a little bit tighter implementation. So we've got one over here is the negative wire uh, soldered onto that bus bar and the primary positive wire is over here soldered onto this bus bar. Um, for the balance leads from the BMS I did use ring terminals and so we've got uh, one minus one plus, two plus, three plus, and four plus. Those are the five leads for the balance charger. And I did put ring terminals on those, even though Mika in his video says explicitly not to use ring terminals. Um, I couldn't really see that it'd make a whole lot of difference, especially on a relatively small pack, and a pack where I'm only planning on pulling about five amps from it. So ring terminals are pretty darn convenient, so I soldered a ring terminal onto each balance lead and then put the uh, ring terminal on the very top. Uh, I suppose someone can uh, write me in the video and let me know why that was a horrible idea, but it seems to me like it was a fine idea. The BMS I have stuck on here on the end. It's got some uh, sticky tape holding it down. Uh, the B- minus lead comes in. The P- minus lead comes out and then the connector with the balance leads is over there. Um, and then I've, I've capped on the heck out of everything just um, to keep it all together. Now I did add a fuse holder to the positive lead coming out. I mean this is my battery pack. If I want a fuse holder I can put a fuse holder on it. Why not? That's one of the nice advantages of building your own pack. And I made a box to put it in. A nice 3D printed box. To protect it so it does go in kind of snug into my box but it will all fit and uh, I can put this together and I can start using my new battery pack so I went ahead and I added a switch down here below the fuse so I can have both the fuse and a switch built into the battery pack, be able to turn it on and off easily. Um, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, the design parameters for this, for the robot I'm intending to use in, in is only about 4 amps. Um, so even though this uh, fuse and switch are rated at 10 amps, um, there's plenty of room in there. I'll probably put like a 7.5 amp uh, fuse in here and the fuse and the switch should be able to handle that level of current just fine. Um, I tied a little knot 
in the cord here that will act to uh, keep it from pulling out of there. And then I have a 3D printed lid uh, that goes on top, like so. And then our battery will be safe and secured inside of this plastic case. There we go. Nice and sturdy and ready for use. Okay, so in conclusion here you can see the battery where I mounted it inside the robot. I thought the kit was really easy to work with. I liked uh, the way I didn't have to get a spot welder. I didn't have to solder the cells. Uh, the instructions and the videos online were very good. Everything fit together kind of exactly the way it was promised that it would. And I like that I can kind of, if I ever need to, I can easily disassemble this battery and I could reconfigure it or reuse the cells um, without having to really tear apart any spot welds or any soldering or anything like that. It's a very modular kit. I think it worked out pretty good for me. It did kind of cost a little bit of a premium to buy the original kit, but there's still lots of parts left over that I believe I could use to build a second battery if I want to. So my overall recommendation of this is positive. Um, please join me for more videos on this robot project. I'm going to be talking about the head in the next video. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.